Separable. Everywhere I would go, Nick would be right behind me. Chaz and Nick. Chaz and Nick. I couldn't talk about one without the other. It was always one and the other. They were always together. As a kid, you would always think that you would just rule the world. I would always joke with Nick just saying that him and I would become president and vice president, and together we would just rule the world. As Chaz got older, he started to pull away from Nick, and that upset me, because that's all they had was each other. And I would tell Chaz, don't take your brother for granted. It's important to be together. We need to split up, because you lost someone else. No. You're not going anyway. You split and stay with me. Oh, no. You just said that. Hey, hey, you little Chinese suck it. I'm about to cap in you. Like, go eat some cold bread. You know what? I don't need fucking KFC <coughs> and stuck your ass up, man. It's when you least expect it that your family is torn apart. 14 years ago, I lost my brother to that disease. Nobody knows what happened. It's the worst day of our lives. Back then, I was running with a bad crowd. My mom pissed me off, so I decided to teach her a lesson. All I wanted to do was to rob her house, run away for a bit, and just give her a tape for evidence, just to tell her, don't cross the line again. So I grabbed my friend Biff with the camera, and my friend Hans. You know, I never liked that Hans. He would come in my house, wouldn't even look at us. He would just go in my cabinets, take stuff, go in my refrigerator. It's these people up here. Who, what are these people? We moved up here. I don't get it. They have no respect. Hans was special. He got into a lot of fights growing up, so I think he got his head knocked in one too many times. Every day he would just talk in these random accents, German, Australian, Japanese. It, it made no sense at all. Smells like us. Oh, damn. Ah. So after everyone went to sleep, we started our plan. We were just gonna grab the hidden stash of money and book it, but we ended up splitting up. And that's when it happened. didn't deserve that. He was a good kid I just persuaded to help me out. He was an honor student, helped out the homeless, you name it. The kid was a walking fairy tale. Well, more specifically, what about Hans? Hans? Oh, dang! What are you talking about? Yo, he survived that. That night, I regret everything for us to go into Chaz's mother's house and to bring shame into that household makes me feel like I do not deserve to live. I have been punished for my actions. You better take that metal out of your mouth. Take the metal out of your mouth. I don't talk to Hans anymore. I can't. There's no way I can look him in the eyes after that night. He was my role model. I really looked up to Nick. You know, ever since the incident, life really hasn't been the same. 
I don't think it'll ever go back to what it was. <laughs> Nick made me the man I am today. You know, what can I say? He was, he was always there. For me. He even taught me how to ride a bike. Can, can you believe that? I'll never forget those moments. And then I talk about the prize. He's like, yo, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, you can't watch Chucky, no. no. You can't watch Chucky, no. You know, this would be a lot easier if it just ended at night. I would have just moved on with my life. But how would you feel if your brother's dead corpse was still wandering around that basement? Yeah, he's still alive. He's lingering in my basement. What the f you want me to do? He's my kid, my son. It's all I have. I recently found out that Nick was still alive. <laughs> and it brought much a sorrow to my life. Like a bird flies home to no nest. I feel lost. A couple of years actually, we did a really good job at hiding it. My mom paid off Hans to keep his mouth shut and he cooperated. And with Biff, well, Biff didn't really have a family so that loophole was closed. But we made the one mistake of trying to have people accept it. None of the family knew, you know. Every year we'd have our annual Christmas party, and that's what we've been doing since I was born. And I, I love to see my cousins every year. It's one of my favorite events that we've had. And then they showed up one year without Nick. And then the next year. And the next year. And the next year. And Aunt Deb every year would give some excuse of why Nick wasn't there. Homework. He was grounded. He was sick. It just it didn't make any sense. It was such bull. We knew something was off. <laughs> they actually brought Nick to one Christmas party, and I will never forget it. Aunt Deb sat us down, told us the whole thing, and we were all taken aback by it, as you could probably imagine. And then she went into the other room rolled in this cage, and there was Nick. That Christmas party was the last time I saw my family. I gathered all of Nick's friends to, to come over, showed them, and they haven't, nobody's come around. Like, nobody wants to be around us anymore. They, they look at him and they're afraid. They don't know what else to do. They've abandoned him, and especially me. After that Christmas party, the news spread like wildfire. The police came to try to take us in, but I knew my rights. Since my brother was technically dead, it doesn't really count as murder. So they took us in anyway, and we kind of just made a deal with them, seize over the videotape. We had the government try and take him away. He doesn't deserve to be a science experiment. The hell with the government. He's my kid, he's my son. I have to look out for him. A couple years after we were taken in, people slowly start to forget. Uh, I finally got a job, and I saved up enough money to buy a computer, and I found this site called YouTube, and I was, I was fascinated with it, until I came across a clip of that night. And I, don't, I have no idea who the hell got a hold of that footage, but that's when really started to hit the fan. And I tried everything to get it taken down, but by then, it, it was too late. It's not fair. It's just not fair. He was a good student. He was a straight A student. He could have been somebody. And I know down there somewhere, he's got such a good heart. What happened to him? Shut up! Jackie has been nothing but a blessing to him and me. She comes over every day. She feeds him. She's just there for him. I, I don't know what I would do without her. For God, I, you know, I did my part in life. 
It's my turn. I don't want to have to do this. I need somebody to take it from me. I got to live my own life. Hi, my name is Jackie Lloyd Webber, and I am Nick's girlfriend. So I was browsing around YouTube, listening to my favorite Creed songs one day, when I came across this video of a kid who had tragically turned into a zombie and was being held captive in a basement somewhere, and my heart sunk, and I, you know, truly felt for this kid. So. I started to do some research and I found out where he lived. You know, I just, I needed to meet him. The day I met him was the day my life changed forever. You know, zombie or not, I can tell that Nick still has a heart. So I just try and do everything I can to make his life better. Do you sometimes find it hard to live your life knowing that your boyfriend is zombie? I try not to be selfish, but yes. You know, I hear from my friends all these double dates they're going on, and I see their posts on Facebook about how wonderful their lives are, and here I am, feeding another rotten carcass to my boyfriend. You know, it's not much to brag about. Where do you get all this food from? How do you supply it? I have my ways. I have my ways. I like Jackie, don't get me wrong, but there's something really wrong with that girl. The fact that she goes over there daily to change the kids' clothes, change the kids' goddamn clothes is loony. The kid's not gonna care what punk band shirt you give him that day. The only thing he cares about is chunks of flesh and intestines. You just take it day by day, you know? There's really no telling what tomorrow is gonna bring. And the only thing I know for sure is that I will be by his side until the day I die. I love that man and I don't give a f what anybody else thinks. You know, I see him for who he really is. The future, or future. I got my dead son living in my basement and when I piss, what's gonna happen? Let the next family that lives here or buys his house worry about it. I've been through enough in my life. My son Chaz, gone, done, out of here. What's gonna happen to him? I don't know, but you know what? I can't worry about it. I haven't seen any of the school aces in years. Nobody knows I volunteered for this interview. We shunned them out, you know, shortly after the whole incident. It hurts, but it's what's best for everyone. I don't know what's gonna happen next, to be honest with you. But all I know is that thing in my mother's basement, that's not my brother. I wish I could just finish what I started, but my mom, she won't allow it. It's pathetic if you ask me. I just hope one day that that I'll find some peace. So is that it? Yeah, that's all I have to say. All right, man. Well, thanks. I'll try and get the true story out there. Thank you. Appreciate your interest in this. Absolutely. I'll gather up my stuff and get out of your hair. <sighs> Thank you.
Jackie! Answer your door, Jackie! We had a deal! Look, I know this hurts, and you have no idea how hard it is for me, but this has to happen. He has to die. He has to die! is feeding time. I have to feed my boyfriend, Jack. Jackie, I know you're scared, but you knew this day would come. What day? Every day is the same. I always feed Nick at six. What makes this day so different? I know you don't want this to happen, but it has to. You just need to let go and accept it. No, see, that's where you're wrong, Chaz. I accepted the way my life was going to be the second I met Nick. Nick is my world now, and I'm not going to let you destroy my world. Back. Up. Now. Chaz. You don't have a choice, Jack. Either get out of the way and let me do this, or I'll be burying two bodies today. Make your choice. Oh, my God. 
would you feel if your brother's dead corpse was still wandering around that basement? Yeah, he's still alive. He's lingering in my basement. <laughs> and it brought much, much sorrow to my life. went to the other room, rolled in this cage, and there was Nick. I see their posts on Facebook about how wonderful their lives are, and here I am, feeding another rotten carcass to my boyfriend. <laughs>